Hey everyone, welcome back to my channel. This is Coffee with Katie. I have my Not Today Satan mug. I'm actually drinking tea. This is a really nice green tea that has like some cinnamon in it. It's really delicious. I got off work early today, so I thought this would be a perfect time to just hang out. It's super rainy outside because of this hurricane weather that's coming through. My thoughts and prayers are with you guys that are on the coast that are dealing with this hurricane. I'm sure it's horrifying. Um, we're getting a ton of rain and we've got some flash flood warnings. So I am inside with my tea, trying to chillax. So today's video is going to be my August reading wrap up. So let's talk about all the books that I read in August. I believe that I read eight books in August. The first being Queen of Air and Darkness by Cassandra Clare. So this book is the last book in the Dark Artifices series, which follows Emma and Julian and the LA Institute, and there's a lot of fairy involvement. So obviously I've talked about the first and second book, and I'm not going to like go into what the series is about again, but I'm just going to kind of give you my thoughts. I This was my least favorite of that trilogy, that series in itself, The Dark Artifices. I gave this book two stars, and this series itself, so The Dark Artifices, is also not my favorite series in the entire Shadowhunter universe with all of those series. I would say this is my least favorite. I think Magnus Bane single-handedly carries this book and the Dark Artifices, like single-handedly Magnus Bane. He's hilarious, it's great. I was not a big fan of this series. I, I'll be honest in saying that the Shadowhunters books have not been my favorite. I absolutely love The Infernal Devices. I believe I've mentioned that multiple times. And I kept hoping that she was going to write more things like that series. And the more I go into it, the more I'm thinking that was just like a one-time deal. However, I am very excited to start Chain of Gold. And I'm probably going to give myself a break from the Shadowhunter world before I go into that. Just because most of it I have not been a big fan of. But I do have a little higher hopes for that because it's set in a similar time period and time frame as the Infernal Devices. It's right after. So I'm hoping that's going to be better. But when it comes to this book in itself, I felt the books were way too long for what was happening in the plot. It just felt like it kept dragging on. I felt like the way the problems were resolved were very convenient. I felt like the characters were kind of going out of character in some instances. Like, Julian was painted as a very responsible adult. I think I mentioned this in another, in the second book that I read. And then he kind of turns to being almost irresponsible in his decision makings. And that fell off to me. There was some weird, like, fae or fairy things going on in fairy. There was a portal trope to another dimension. And I, I understand people like that. And I... I'm not knocking it, but different dimensions and a multiverse is not my favorite trope because it makes me feel like there's no stakes because they can just go and they can fix these problems or they can go to a different world and retrieve this or do this. So I don't like multiverse and portal fantasies in that sense where it's more like time travel into a multiverse rather than like you're portaled into another world. So it had a lot of things that I just personally don't like and then the way the plot came about I was not a big fan of either. I didn't like the ending. The very last part of the ending was very strange to me and I I really don't want to continue but I'm at the point where I'm so invested that I want to know what happens so I'm gonna keep reading them even though it hurts me a little and I hope they're gonna get better but just wasn't a big fan. The next book I read in August is Winter Song by S.J. Jones. Now I have a whole book review up for this book and I can link that down below if you would like to see it. So I'm not going to get into this one very much, but I read this in a period of like four days. I think I was also sick, but I read this in a period of four days. It was an interesting read. It was very dark and very, so it said winter song. So it was very wintry atmospheric, but also like underground, dark, cold, atmospheric. Um, it was pretty gruesome in a lot of instances, and the other parts were very, like, fairy tale esque It was very strange to have the two in juxtaposition, but it was good. The music elements of the story were really interesting, as well as the goblin elements. I ended up giving this book three stars, and it was just 
overall the word that I would use to describe this book is strange. I really liked the first third of the book and the last third of the book but that middle part was kind of bizarre to me and it kind of lost me a little bit but overall I enjoyed it and I will continue because this is a duology. The next book that I read in August is All Systems Read by Martha Wells. So this is a book that I have been, it's a tiny little novella actually, it's very short. Um, I had been wanting to read this for a really long time and I just never had and so when I got the role in my dice game TBR to read this, I was actually kind of excited first off because it was smaller and I had a lot of books on my TBR, but secondly because I've been really curious about this and I was really excited to actually finally pick it up. So Murderbot Diaries is about this sec unit that is called Murderbot. He is a, he, she, I don't know, is a Murderbot and he's could have been or was supposed to be a killing machine, a murdering machine, but instead he like hardwired himself and rerouted his systems so that he's just kind of a lazy, introverted sec unit that loves to watch TV. And this book was absolutely hilarious. I gave this book five stars because listening to Murderbot be like socially awkward and introverted was absolute gold. It was so funny. There were times where I was laughing out loud with this book. He was like horrified that somebody asked him a question and it kind of plays into the fact that he's part human, part robot and how that makes people uncomfortable and why he just avoids people. So if you're an introvert, I think you would really enjoy this book and kind of the nuances of understanding his reactions to things. That was really funny. I am not an introvert and I still thought it was hilarious. And this is, I don't know if I said this, but this is the first book in the Murderbot Diaries. It was a super fun ride. There was also an underlying plot and I thought that was interesting and I'm really curious how this is gonna go. I think there's six books at this point. Uh, most of them are novellas, but I know they've been getting longer as the series has continued. But if you haven't read this, I think it's absolutely hilarious. I It wasn't boring to me at all, even though there were parts that were quote unquote slower, but it wasn't losing my attention because it was just really interesting to experience and to hear about. I did listen to most of this on audiobook just because it was easier for me as I was getting things done around the house. And it was really funny and enjoyable. I would absolutely recommend this book, especially I think if you are beginning to get into sci-fi or you want to get into sci-fi, I think this would be a good book because it's not that deep into a sci-fi space opera kind of a thing and it's easy to get the humor aspects of it but also delve into the space aspect, the ships, the sec units, like those types of dynamics. So I think this would be good for you if you're kind of intimidated by sci-fi. So funny. The next book I read is Ahsoka by E.K. Johnston. So this is obviously a Star Wars book. I don't know if it's obvious. This is a Star Wars book. And it's about Ahsoka Tano, who, if you don't know who that character is, she shows up in... Ooh, I shouldn't say that. That might be a spoiler. She's in The Clone Wars, and she's in another Star Wars show. A couple of them. If you know what I'm talking about, you know what I'm talking about. Um, <laughs> she's in a live action show, another live action show, and she's in another animated show. So this follows the story of Ahsoka right after the Clone Wars. It kind of talks about her, in the very beginning, it talks about her dueling with Maul, Darth Maul. That might be a spoiler too, I'm sorry if it is. It talks about her doing that and it kind of just takes off from there with her own story where she's on another planet after Order 66 and all of that happens and how she's kind of adjusting to not being in the Jedi Order, but also the Jedi Order being eradicated. It's how she's coping with that and also how she's continually trying to do something, hide from the Empire, help people while the Empire is rising and taking over. It was a really interesting read. I highly, highly, highly recommend the audiobook if you like The Clone Wars because Ashley Eckstein narrates this book and she is the voice of Ahsoka Tano in The Clone Wars and it brought so much of it to life for me because I've listened to her over, you know, seven seasons of The Clone Wars and there's also sound effects in here and it was just such a treat to listen to this audiobook and 
It was such a good time. I gave it five stars. It was really interesting to learn more of Ahsoka's time in between these two time periods and also how she gets her double white lightsabers. It's really interesting to see her reflect on her previous um, friendships, relationships with the Jedi in the Order that are now all eradicated. It was a really fun read, really good read. I would highly recommend this as well, especially as an audiobook. I would say if you can listen to it as an audiobook because it was such a good time. The next book I read in August is Rage by Cora Carmack. So as you know, I read Roar in May and this is the second book, Rage, in the Stormheart series. I really, really enjoyed this. I think I enjoyed this more than the first one and I am dying because I really want to know what happens and the third book was supposed to come out in July in theory and then the author I think in June or July posted uh Instagram post saying that that was just kind of a placeholder if the book was finished the book is not finished and she's still slowly working on it so I don't know when the third book's coming out and I need it because I need to know what happens I was super interested that we got to know more about the kind of looming villainous character and also Cassius. I really like Cassius and so I liked that we got to see more of these characters and we saw the development of other characters that have kind of been in the background. It was a really good time. I'm dying to know what happens. I really, really wish I had the third book. I believe in my Goodreads review I actually said the third book is, in, is nowhere in sight. Please send help. <laughs> I cannot believe that I love this book more than the first one because usually the second books are kind of second book syndrome-y and you don't really like them as much. I liked this one more than the first because the first was a lot of building the story and the like structure of the story and this was kind of more fleshing it out a little bit more and delving into it. I can't wait to learn more about the Storm Lord and Cassius. I'm just desperate for the third book and I really hope it comes out soon, but I also hope she takes her time with the health issues she is experiencing and also, you know, taking the time to write it well. But I will be in a pit of despair until I get the third one. And I gave this book four out of five stars. If you haven't read the Stormheart series, obviously there's only two right now, I think it's a little underrated in the fantasy realm. You can disagree with me if you want. I really thought this was interesting magic system and I really like the weather aspects and the storm aspects. So I think this is pretty underrated if you're interested in the story. Ooh. Let's just take a sip of tea because, yep. The next book that I read in August is King of Scars by Leigh Bardugo. So I finally read it guys. I finally read King of Scars. I really enjoyed being able to follow Nikolai and Zoya again. Um, they're one of my favorite characters of the Grisha trilogy, and so that was just a treat for me. I know there's a lot of mixed feelings about this book, and a lot of people don't like this book. I really enjoyed it. Was it my favorite? I don't think so. But I didn't seem to have issues or problems or dislike it as much as everyone else seems to. I liked it a lot. I will say that even though I really liked it, things got weird. They did. It was a very bizarre take and twist that it went into. Um, I'm trying to say this without spoiling it, but basically they go to a place and it's a very strange twist to the story. And I never expected that to happen or for anything to come of those um, previous things that were mentioned. So that was different. I didn't hate it because I understand like she may have had that intention when she wrote all of the other books and we just don't know but I liked it overall I gave it 3.5 stars not the best not the worst I'm really curious to see how it continues I plan on reading Rule of Wolves in September like I want to finish this duology I'm pretty excited about it again I love Nikolai and Zoya they really make me laugh and I've always loved their characters and honestly, I saw a critique that said that they thought the characters, some people said the characters didn't change, which is why I like them. And some people said the characters were not consistent through the Grishaverse to this. I disagree with that. I think the characters are consistent and that they continue to be who they are and that they're maybe a little bit more improved, but I think their characteristics and their flaws are the same. And so I really enjoyed following them again. 
because again they're one of my they're two of my favorite characters so it's great that ending though I know that's probably why a lot of people hate this book is because of the ending if you read this and you know what I'm talking about with the ending I loved it I can't wait to see how that works I'm so excited if you read it and you don't like the ending I get it I understand usually I would not like that either but in this case I'm here for it and I want to know what happens. So overall, I really enjoyed this. It wasn't my favorite, but I didn't hate it at all. The next book I read was All the Tides of Fate by Adeline Grace. So this is the second book in the All the Stars and Teeth duology. And the, I listened to this on audiobook again, and the narrator for this one was a thousand times better than the narrator for the other one. I told you that that kind of took me out of the story and I just felt like the narrator did a pretty poor job. I hate saying that. She's, it's her job to do this and it's her creative interpretation. But for me, the voice did not work. So for this one, the voice was much better. The voice actor was much better. However, I did not like this story as much as All the Stars and Teeth. I felt like this book was much weaker and it felt like the character was pushing against like her, her fate the whole time, which is probably the point. But it felt like one of those scenarios where if you just talked about it, things could have been solved faster, which I understand is like a theme in a lot of books, not just YA, not just adult, not just fantasy. It's just, it's just something that people use to prolong the, po the plot line, push the story forward, whatever. I feel like when I, when I don't like a book that much, but I don't hate it, the thoughts that I have about that book just like go out of my brain because my brain is like, we don't need to hold on to this, just shove it away so we can make room for other things. So I feel like I'm sitting here trying to talk about that book and I don't even know, but um, it just didn't, I don't think it had the same feel of the first book. I think the first book is much better and enjoyable. This one is entertaining, I would say to a degree, but it wasn't the same. It wasn't the same feel and it was a little, I wouldn't say it's even darker, but it felt like it was trying to do something like a mix between the bachelorette and a quest to find a magical object. And the two things combined just felt very strange. And then it seemed like there was no point to this portion throughout towards the middle end of the book. It just felt like that got shoved away and was like, oh, never mind, we're not doing this. And so it's like, so what was the point of this in the first place? And there's like a lot of assassination attempts. And I don't know, it just felt weird and off to me. And I know that it was like resolved, but I felt like the book was not resolved well and the problems weren't resolved well. And then it just felt like, it just, I guess that's what it is. It feels kind of unresolved to me, but it's the end of the duology. And I just didn't like it. I didn't like the second half of it. I really like the first half. I think it has similar like nautical seafaring things. So and jungle-esque type situation. So if you enjoyed that, you might like this book. It just didn't do it for me. I gave it like a 2.5 stars. It was entertaining. It was okay, but it wasn't anything I would want to read again, if that makes sense. I feel like my thoughts are very scattered about that book, but it's because I just don't know what else to say about it. It was just kind of not that great for me. The last book that I finished in August is Blood and Honey by Shelby Mahurin. Mahurin? Mahurin, right? <laughs> I keep saying Shelby Mahurin and I don't think that's right. So, well, I really liked Serpent and Dove and I was really looking forward to continuing the series because I love Serpent and Dove. This one, I think suffered a little bit from middle book syndrome, second book syndrome in a lot of different ways with the plot and how it was, the plot was moving forward. They're like trying to build these alliances and it just felt very much like it's a prepping for the third book type of a situation, which is understandable. And I think it's really hard to not have that in a second book in a trilogy. That being said, this was not bad. I don't think this was bad at all. I liked it. Again, not my favorite of all time. I liked the first one better, but it was interesting to get more of the other, I don't want to say clans because that doesn't sound right, but you get to see more of the blood witches and the Luguru, the werewolves. So you do get to see that in this. I don't think that's a spoiler because it talks about it in literally like the first part of the book, what they're trying to accomplish. Well, I think that was, that was an interesting take and you get to see more of the development of the magic. 
you get to see more development of Lou and Reed as characters, as well as Coco and Bo. So it is really interesting to see how the characters develop, the different alliances they're trying to forge, how they get there, Chasseurs, you know, obviously being a part of this and trying to track them down, and just all of the politics of all of these things intertwining while Lou is still trying to escape. Those aspects are really interesting. I wouldn't say this was slow or boring or anything like that. It was just a lot of build up. And while that can be good, it just wasn't my favorite in this book. But really curious to see what's going to happen. Overall, I would say even from Serpent and Dove, the magic system is here is really unique to me and really interesting. I know some people didn't really like it, but I think it's pretty cool. So those are all the books that I read in August, or rather finished in August. I did start Throne of Glass. I don't know if I'll continue that at the moment. And I am in the middle of reading Beasts of Prey by Ayana Gray. Um, I got this arc because of Bookish First, and I have been slowly working my way through it. I'm over halfway done. I didn't get to finish this in August, but I'm hoping to be able to finish it soon. And then get a review up for you guys, because this book does come out on September 28th. So it's been pretty good so far, but I will leave my thoughts for the review. All right, everyone. Well, that is it for today's video. Let me know all of the books that you were able to read in August and what your favorite read of August was. Please like this video if you liked it. Subscribe if you want to. I hope you guys are ready for fall because I'm certainly not. I love summer. Thanks for watching. Stay safe and caffeinated. Bye.